Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. This is going to be part 5 of the HTTP DLL2 networking mini-series. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you go right back to part 1 and start there, otherwise this is going to really freak you out. It's going to be mind-blowing. So in this tutorial I'm going to be, uh, well we're going to be sending our image angle of our sprite. So in order to do this I put up some sprite prototypes, you might have seen them on my Facebook page, so we're going to be using one of them. That's it right over here, sprite ship. Okay. It's quite a tiny little black and green ship. So this is the kind of minimalistic idea I'm going for. So this is going to be the, the sprite that we're going to be using. First things first, um, I'm going to give the remote player and the local player this image. And we're going to make sure that our object controller no longer draws stuff. You know, The local player and the remote player have come of age. They can start doing things for themselves. That's what I think. So let's go do that now. Let's open up our objects. Local player, remote player. We're going to give them both that sprite, just like that. Simple. Make sure that object controller no longer draws stuff for them. Um, we can just comment out all of that. Send that off. And we're just going to need a copy of these two lines. Uh, we'll do all that. Into our remote player. Uh, okay, remote player, give it a draw. Firstly, we need to grab in some draw self over there, add in some code, and we we'll paste that in. So we don't need that. We don't need that, we don't need that, it just needs to draw its name. So yeah, in part 4 we um, drew that little title, it said Hello World, that was our custom sending. If you don't know what that is, just go to the tutorial before this. If you're still a little hazy on custom sending, I suggest you watch that tutorial again, several times, just to you know soak it into your brain a bit. Um, but once you grasp that concept of sending and receiving messages and then broadcasting it to all the clients, it's it's smooth sailing from here, I'm telling you, it's, it's excellent things you can do. Um, just by sending custom messages. So that's done. Now, now that we've got our sprite ship set up, uh, we're not going to do anything really with the server when it comes to sprites. Uh, on the server side, the sprites are just going to be visualized using uh, primitives, you know, those circles and whatnot. So we're not going to worry about that. But the server is going to need to broadcast all the image angles of the clients to all the other clients. So, step one. We're going to go into our object controller right over here. And we're going to locate wherever we send variables every step. So that's when we send our coordinates, um, our you know, V speed, our H speed. We're going to go over there and we're just going to whack an image angle. It's really simple. The sending structure for the basic coordinates and stuff is all there already. So we just got to add an extra variable to that. So go to our step, open this up. We go over here. Now we notice that um, here it says send, position, and speed. We got all these things here X, Y, and H speed and V speed. What we're going to do is add an extra H buffer, right? We're also going to do a float 32, obviously, to our global buffer. And we just say image angle. Check that out, so easy. Okay, so that's done. Sending that on the two, remember that. Going down, now we're going to be receiving back from the server that image angle. Notice over here, we're storing it in a, into a temporary variable. So I'm going to go to the top and add a temporary variable called angle. Go back down, 943, angle equals h buffer, read float 32, also from the global buffer. Uh, global buffer. All right. Then down here, object remote player. It's checking the server ID. Then we're going to create a variable here called server angle equals. And we're just going to set it to this line 43 angle. Very simple. Now we're going to keep in mind that we've now sent the image angle. We're receiving the image angle, but now we need to create the server angle variable in object remote player. Notice there's nothing else here in this step event that needs to change. So let's go out of here. We need to go to object remote player. Move that to the side. Make sure in our create we have something called create over here server angle. And we can initialize that to zero. Just like that. Okay. And then in our in step, open that up. Here it says X, Y, and we're setting it up to some stuff here. We need to make sure we say image angle equals server angle. See? Pretty simple. Now, because we get our draw self, it's going to get that image angle there, and it's going to, you know, spin itself around, depending on what that specific remote player is doing. So, that's done. Right like that. Close all these. Let's go back into our controller. So, we were sending it to when we sent all these, these very important variables through every step. Sending it to. Another thing, I'm going to make the local player over here, I'm going to make him point towards the mouse. 
If you don't know what the following code is all about, I do have a tutorial on making your object point towards the mouse in the banner. Give that a click. Um, it'll open a new window so you can pause this, check that out, and return if you want to. So here we're going to say image angle equals point direction. Pop this up, and we want the x and y of this object to point towards the mouse x and mouse y. Just like that. Alright, so now we have our image angle. We are sending that through and whatnot. So that's all cool. That's all good. So done, done, done. Now we're gonna go into our server side. That's here on the left. Open up our object player. Just remember on the server side, object player receives the messages, and on our client side, object controller does everything. So here we go into our step. Open that up. So here we go. Just as the controller of the client, the controller of well the the player of the server side is always going to be sending or uh, well, broadcasting the coordinates and you know all the very valuable information about each player to all the other clients. So down here we've got if has dot equal, equals true, write it to, and um, here we're writing all the very important variables. So just like we did in the client, we need to add an extra one here. H buffer write oops float thirty two to the global dot buffer. Gonna append that there, and here we're going to say uh, we can just say image angle because really we're getting from object player, so we're going to send its image angle. But perhaps yeah, let's make something called client angle because remember we are going to be just using primitives. Yeah, client angle, just like that. So we're writing our ID, the x and y coordinates, the h speed, the v speed, and the client angle. Now if we scroll down, see where else are we sending these valuable coordinates? Right over here, case two. A tag of two means setting the place coordinates. So that's that message that came in. If we look at our controller over here, the step. You see, it writes a two. So that's coming in over here. So we need to make a variable called client angle. And that's what we are eventually sending out right over here. That's what we're sending out over there. So we're going to make this variable and you know what? I'm going to copy this to save some time. Right like that. Now we don't create a temporary variable for this client angle because remember we already are in this object player. So yeah, so we don't need a, a temporary variable at the top. So yeah, we're getting a client angle. So now we just got to go into object player. Well, here into this thing and set up client angle. Uh, if we hit create, make sure we've got something called client angle. Set to zero, just like that. And because this is the server, we don't need to visualize this image angle way in any way, unless you really want to. Um, we're just going to be broadcasting that straight away. So that's done. Uh, what does this end step do? Uh, we don't have to worry about that. So yeah, it's going to be receiving. It's going to be broadcasting. So we can run through this real quick. If there's anything else I'm thinking. Nope. Okay. So um, our player is going to be rotating via this line of code here. Line 34, image angle equals point direction x, y, mouse x, mouse y. Now that it's changed its image angle, uh, object controller is going to say here in its step, well, every 30 times a second, whatever room speed is, I'm going to be sending this image angle along with the v speed, h speed, the x and y coordinates to 2, tag 2, remember tag 2. So we're going to the server, right here in object player. In its step, it's receiving tag 2. Go down to tag 2 here case 2. It's getting all these things. It's getting the x, the y, the h speed, the v speed, and that angle. See, that's getting that right in here. So it's saving it in a variable called client angle. Now, in our create, we initialize client angle so it knows where to put it. And now after it's received it, it's also going to be broadcasting that same message. So back to the top, right to line 5 through 22. Here we have some code saying um, if we've started, so if the player's in the game, send its IDs, X, Y, his client, H speed, V speed, as well as their client angle variable. So that's why we initialized it, because if there is no client, because there's, you know, there's sometimes there's a, a shorter period of time between receiving and sending. So if it does the send just before it does the receive, it's going to be sending a zero, you know, so that there's no errors right there. So that's why we had to initialize it first. So yeah, so it's going to be sending a two also, and it's going to be appending to this packet. It's going to be putting on client angle, which it received over there. Either it did receive it or it's zero at this point. Uh, so we go back to the controller here, controller, the step. Looking for two, right over here, case two, tag of two means we want to remove the remote players. So we're grabbing the image angle, the angle over here. So remember, because we're working with controller, we have to make a temporary variable right at the top. 
because this controller is going to be handling a lot of remote players and we don't want two remote players to have the exact same angle so every time this piece of script runs it's going to delete that temporary variable and recreate it so just like that so we're grabbing the angle from this float 32 from the server then we're saying with object remote player so we're changing our scope here to the scope of, of that of object remote player and we are saying, you know, if this is the right remote player, set is X, set is Y, set is H speed is V speed, and also set up this variable called server angle to the angle we've received right over there. Now if we go into our remote player, let's find it over here, and we go into our create, we initialize server angle to zero, then we also note that in our end step, it's got image angle equals server angle. So finally here we're saying, now that you've got server angle, set your image angle to that of server angle, and we'll see the whole rotation and everything, all in real time. So then we go into our draw. Notice we are drawing ourselves because we have this here, sprite ship, so we have to, you know, this draw event is overriding the default draw. If you don't know what I'm talking about, default draws and whatnot, you can check out the basic draw, but I'm assuming that if you're checking out networking, you're, you know, somewhat advanced or you're wanting to become advanced, so you know all that stuff already. So yeah, are we overriding our draw, so we make sure that we're drawing ourselves. So that will handle the image angle that it's receiving. And then, you know, we are putting up our C red and writing its name in the title so that we can still send the hello world thing. So that's all done right there. Save everything. Or save there. Say OK. Save this. I'm going to run another client. Play that. Play this. Just minimize both of these. OK, so here's our server. We say we want to connect to the loopback address and let's say JP, say OK. So here I am, see I'm rotating, but it's not sending, well, the server is not displaying this rotation. I mean, it's not necessary for us. I mean, if you want to, then you just can put that up there and then you can give this some sort of sprite. Otherwise, you won't really see it. But here we're rotating. So I'm going to minimize the server for now. We don't really need it. Put that at the top. Open up another client. All right, make sure that's all good. Then we're going to play this one. I can minimize it again. So let's move this around. So the client's going to ask us again for loopback, and we can say Billy. Okay, Billy's in. Check this out. There we go. So we've still got Billy's name. Still is not saying anything unless he pushes enter. It still says hello world. And Billy moves around, and his image angle is getting sent to all the clients. Check that out. All in real time. And there we go, too. Just as simple as that. So we're using the infrastructure already supplied. And we're just slapping on another important variable right at the bottom below the H speed and the V speed. Simple as that. So I suggest that you include all very important variables. I mean, that's why the X and Y coordinates are there. Right in that that section that sends uh, room speed times per second. You know what I mean? I mean, and then later on, if you want, you can... You can totally optimize things, you know, check if the X or Y or the image angle hasn't changed. And if it has, then only send it. If it hasn't, then you don't have to send it. You can save some uh, bandwidth right over there and speed up your game. Uh, so that's how simple it is to send your image angle. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to be setting up three sprites. And we are going to assign a random sprite to the player as he enters the game. And we're going to make sure that that custom sprite, whatever one has been chosen by the application, is sent to the server and then sent to all the clients. So a certain client is going to have a different sprite to another one. And it's still going to be sending its image angle. I just thought that it would be better to first send the image angle before we start sending custom sprites. Because um, when it comes to the important variables that you need to send, sometimes, for example, what I like to do to spice up some of these... Um, these sprites is when you shoot then maybe one of the cannons has a different kind of sub image and it kind of makes it look interactive like it's actually shooting then you want to send one variable for the sprite that is being sent and then another variable for the the sub image and that can you know get long so I like to put the most important variables that need to be sent all close together that's why you got an X and a Y and your V speed and your H speed and your image angle those are the basic most important variables that need to be sent and then we can just append to the rest of that packet as many other maybe non-essential but still you know sort of important variables right to the end of that so i hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful please feel free to comment rate, and subscribe i do look forward to all your suggestions and comments it's really great stuff guys with all this interactivity if there's anything specific that you'd like to see as this mini series uh, progresses now's the time to to say so because uh, i'm kind of putting together an idea of what the end game is going to look like uh, so yeah, your suggestions of that will help mold this little mini game together.
you can find the downloadable project files right in the description. I've uh, archived the the clients and the server into one, so it's just one uh, project for you to download. I use Dropbox, so it's really, really reliable. If you're feeling generous, you can buy me a beer or a coffee sometime. Links are in the description. And yeah, so if you do find these tutorials helpful, you can help me by sharing the balls out of them because there's some really great uh, lessons to be learnt in all of them. And I'd really like as many people to, I don't know, see them as possible. So coming up next time, I'm going to be sending different sprites. Um, if you like my Facebook page, you will would have seen the, the three sprites I've got going there. So it's going to be like an incremental thing where the player sort of collides with a with an upgradable uh, object of some kind and then he gets the next level of ship so that's what we're going to be doing and so on and then he, when he gets hit by a bullet or something then he loses a level of ship until he is destroyed completely that's going to that's kind of the basic kind of prototype idea I've got in my head so the next tour we're going to be sending the sprites and then moving on to menus and stuff like that feel free to like my Facebook page links in the description if you want to get some updates on exactly what is going to be coming next um, in this tutorial as well as other you know gaming concepts and theories for the future as always happy coding and i'll catch you guys next time for part six of this http dll2 networking extravaganza thanks for watching